Hello and welcome to Maulana Azad National Urdu University. This lesson is for students of BA, BSc and BCom. It is based on Ability Enhancement Compulsory course. This course is titled English Communication Skills. Today we are going to take up Unit 1. The title of Unit 1 as you can see on your screen is Classification and Description of Consonant Sounds. In English, there are 44 sounds, but only 26 letters of the alphabet. This is not the case in Urdu and the other Indian languages. In most of the Indian languages, including Urdu, we have one letter to represent one sound. In the case of English, this is not the case. What we find in English is that there are less number of letters of the alphabet. As I told you a little while ago, there are only 26 letters of the English alphabet, but there are 44 sounds. In order to speak good English, it is important that you learn these 44 sounds. I am sure all of you are well aware of the 26 letters of the alphabet. When we talk about consonant sounds or vowel sounds in English, we are not talking about the letters. Please remember, we are talking about the sound. It is the sound that is important and not the letter. For example, in general we may say A, E, I, O, U are English vowels. But we do not mean that the letters A, E, I, O, U are vowel letters. We are referring to the vowel sounds in English. However, in our class today, we are not talking about vowel sounds. We are going to concentrate only on consonant sounds. Before we proceed further, it is important we understand what we mean by consonant. The word consonant, as you can see on your screen, is taken from the Greek word consonotum. It means sounding together or sounding with. To utter any sound in any language, we need some speech organs. It is our speech organs that help us in the articulation of sounds, whether it is in Urdu, whether it is in English, whether it is Telugu, Marathi, any of the languages, the speech organs play a very important role in the articulation of sound. In the case of consonant sound, we need a combination of lip, teeth, tongue and velum. Before I proceed further, I would like you to know very briefly the major distinction between a consonant sound and a vowel sound. In the case of a consonant sound, there is restriction of air when air is released, whether it is through the lips, teeth, tongue or velum, whatever combination is being used, there is restriction of air. In the case of production of a vowel sound, there is absolutely no restriction of air. This is the major distinction between a vowel sound and a consonant sound that you need to remember. Now please remember that to create a consonant sound, we need a combination of lip, teeth, tongue and velum. Let us first look at the classification of consonants. As you can see on the screen, the classification of consonants can be divided into three major parts, voicing, place of articulation and manner of articulation. Under voicing, as you can again see on your screens, we have two subheads, voiced and voiceless. When I say voiced or voiceless, I am referring to voiced consonants or voiceless consonants. Before we proceed, let us look once again at the major classification of consonants. Under voicing, we have voiced and voiceless. Then we have the place of articulation and the manner of articulation. What do I mean by place of articulation? Place, as you know, is the point at which the sound is articulated. 
manner of articulation again as the term itself indicates is the manner the way in which we articulate this particular sound let us look at voicing first we are looking at voiceless consonants then we'll proceed to the voiced consonants as the term very clearly indicates voiceless consonants are those in the articulation of which the vocal cords do not vibrate. These consonant sounds in which the vocal cords do not vibrate are P, F, K, T. Let me repeat P, F, K, T. If you remember at the beginning of the class I told you the letter is not important it is the sound that is important. So I am not saying P, F, K, T. I am referring to the sound P, F, K, T. A very easy way to practice this is to put your fingers at the place where the vocal cords are here. Put them at the vocal cords and utter the words. When you say P, there is no vibration. You say F, there is no vibration. You say K, there is no vibration. You say T, there is again no vibration. Let us now look at the other set. This is the set of voiced consonants. Again, like voiceless consonants, the term very clearly indicates that we are talking about vocal cords that vibrate when we utter these consonants. So we call them voiced consonants. The sounds where the vocal cords vibrate are b, v, g, d. You just have to put your fingers against the vocal cords when you utter. Keep them pressed together and utter the sounds with me. B, v, g, d. You will feel your vocal cords vibrate when you utter these sounds. Please remember we are not talking about the letter B or the letter V, G or D. We are talking about the sounds. These are consonant sounds. These are voiced consonants. B, V, G, D. Now we are looking at some examples for voicing. On your left hand side are voiced consonants. On your right hand side are the voiceless consonants. I have used a different color to indicate the voiced and the voiceless consonants. When we utter the word bird, van or gate, or pleasure, the vocal cord vibrate when we use the consonant. For example, b in bird, van in van, gate, g sound in gate, pleasure, the j sound in pleasure, pleasure. Let's repeat, bird, van, gate, pleasure. Can we move on to the voiceless consonants now? Fish sun, kite, chin, the sound of f in fish, the sound of s in sun, the sound of k in kite, the sound of ch in chin are all consonant sounds. These are all voiceless consonant sounds. Now, in the course of today's lesson, we looked at one part of the classification of consonant sounds. These sounds uh, that we looked at today are the voicing part of classification. We looked at the voiced consonants and we also looked at the voiceless consonants. We practiced the sounds for both the voiced consonants as well as the voiceless consonants. It is important as students of English for you to also be very familiar with the speech organs. On your screen, you now see a diagram of the speech organs. These speech organs will help you to understand the other lessons more easily. Look at the diagram and the relevant parts that are being marked there and have these in your memory in the course of your lesson, not just unit one, but when we take up unit one, unit two, unit three and unit four, we will be referring to these terms again and again and again. It is not that English is a strange language and what you see on your screen is something unique to the English language. 
most languages make use of these speech organs, the lips, the tongue, the roof of the tongue, the lungs, the vocal cords, the glottis. These are all speech organs that we use constantly when we utter sound. Without sound, there is no speech and without speech, there can be no communication. Communication that can be heard. I am not referring to sign language. To quickly recapitulate, in today's lesson, we introduced you to the word consonant. We told you that it is drawn from the Greek word. We told you what it means. We also told you that in English, there are 26 letters of the alphabet, but that there are 44 sounds. In the course of today's lesson, we told you how important it is for you as a student of Urdu to learn all the 44 sounds of English. It is not necessary that at the end of this class, you will become perfect with voiced consonants or the voiceless consonants. It takes time with practice Hopefully, before the end of semester one, you would have completely mastered all the 44 sounds of English. And the more you practice, please remember, the better your pronunciation, the better your articulation would be. On your screen, you will see some questions being flashed. Try to look at those questions and try to answer them. You may use these questions to discuss when you attend your counseling sessions at the Learner Support Center or you may feel free to contact any of the English course coordinators at the headquarters. Thank you and we look forward to meeting you again in the next lesson.